they don't think you're on a on a run. Clean it. Hopefully. That's the procedural stuff. Number one. Procedural stuff. Number one. Procedural stuff. Number one. Okay, good morning, everybody. As we go to the full mission of today, we're holding today is Friday. We're holding on the sixth reading of the portion of Pasha to the A. We are on uh, chapter 15, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse number one. Mikate Sheva Shonit, at the end of the seventh year, which is this year actually, it's Nasa Shemitah, we're coming to the end of the year of Shemitah. You shall make a year of Shemitah. Shemitah means to release. One might think that this means the seven years starting from the transaction of each loan, because here we go to a mitzvah that when you have to release your loans. So it's not the, it's not the loan, of the, it's not the seventh year of the loan. Therefore, the Pasuk says the seventh year, the year of release has approached in verse number one, nine. But if you say that a seven year means for each loan, then after each individual loan, how is that approach? How is that is approached? No loan has yet transacted. And correctly, we learned that the Pasuk means the seven year according to counting of the Shemitah. That there's a concept of seven years counting, and the seven year counting comes to an end. Every seven years, they started to count the Shemitah when they came into the, the, uh, uh, they came into the land of Israel. And this is the manner of Shemitah. To release the hand of every creditor from what he has lent to his friend. He shall not exact from his friend or from his brother. When it comes to the year of Shemitah, the person has to, everybody has to release their loans from anything that they have borrowed anybody. They have to release their loans, and that's it. Rashi says, Shmeit Masyadach, Shmeit is means to literally release every master from his loan, which is made, which makes no sense. Therefore, Rashi interprets the verse to mean release the hand of every creditor. The word, the word Masy, Baal, the master of his loan. Verse number three, as I knock it, for the foreigner, you may go after the loan. But what is your to your brother, to a fellow Jew? You need to release your head. As Rashi said, is just a positive commandment as brought down in the in the Sifri. Verse number four, However, there will be no needy amongst you. Because the Ebishter will bless Hashem. The Ebishter will bless you in the land. Which God has given to you as an inheritance to possess. Ephes. Further, it says, for there will never cease to be need within the land. Now over here it says there will never be need. Hopefully there will come a time we won't have need. These two verses seem to contradict each other. However, the explanation is when we reform the will of God, there will be need, there, there will be need amongst others, but not amongst you. However, you do not perform the will of God, there will always be needing amongst the Jewish people. Evyain, now she said, Evyain, the needs somebody who's poorer than an ani. Somebody that's poorer than an ani is a poor person. Evyain is a destitute. We turn Evyain means to yearn to a one who yearns for everything because he has nothing. Verse number five, Rakim Shamay Tishmakela Shamakeha. However, you hearken the voice of your Lord, Lishma Lassis commits our shadzai to follow all these commandments. Which I command you today. As she continues, but however, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord, then there will be no needy amongst you. Shamaya Tishma, you will hearken. Shamaya Tishma, a petition of the verb suggests if one listens a little, he will be granted the opportunity to listen much, meaning he will be taught much, Taylor, as a reward. 
And you will lend to many nations. But you will not borrow. You will rule over many nations. But they will not rule over you. Where did God speak to him? To the Jewish people. That, that's, that's the blessings in Deuteronomy, beginning to chapter 28. It says, Last week's passion. And every expression in aiding lending refers to a lender of money. It adopts the causative form, the hill visa, the havanta. You will lend. However, when you have a havanta, when it referred to the borrower, the la visa, you will borrow. So it's more of a passive expression, the grammar. One might think that you will borrow from this one to lend and lend to that one. If the trader says, but you will not borrow. We'll have enough money to lend and lend and lend and not to borrow from A to lend to B. One might think that at the same time, other nations will rule over you. If the trader says, but they will not rule over you. Verse number seven: Ki yeh b'chay avi machad echecha. If you will be amongst you, I need a person. Achad sharecha in one of your cities, but at secha in one of your gates, but at secha in the land that Hashem alekech and Nesla, which God has given to you. Leisamitz es levavcha. Do not harden your heart. But leisik beitz es yadcha. Do not close your hand. Ma'achicha evyim for your poor brother. Now she says, Ki Evian again, the most needy person. His priorities. Evian, somebody who's more just more needy, comes first. Your brother, your father's side has priority, your brother, your mother's side. Sharecha, your gates of your, is the poor of your city have priority of poor of another city. Lysamites, some people suffer as they deliberate whether they should give to the needy or should not give. Therefore, it says you should not harden your heart. Some people stretch out their hand to give, but then close it. Therefore, it says, no, should you close your hand. If you do not give him, you will ultimately become a brother of need, meaning becoming needy yourself. Verse number eight, he said, if I say, Aptista chesed decha, rather you shall open your hands. Lord to him. Ave tabiteni, you shall lend him. They must say they sufficient for his needs. Ashe yechseleh, which he's like. As she says, peiteach tiftach, it's a double expression, means even many times. Don't, even if you have to help him once, twice, then keep on helping that person. Over here, the word key means, meaning rather. Where in the word, in the, in the, in the, in the verse seven, it means if. And in number 10, the word means because. He has many meanings. You can use key to mean it. Rather, if, because. We means rather you should open to him. If he does not want your money as a charitable gift, give him a loan. So that I'm right, the highest level of stock is giving a person a loan. They must say that, however, you're not commanded to make him wealthy, you're commanded to help him what he needs. But then the tenor continues. You have to give a person his needs. What is the person's needs? And that's what Shayachsalay. The question is, what is he lacking? If you have even a horse to ride on, a servant to run before, if you have a rich man, and I used to have sources, horses, I mean, and he used to have a servant, so you have, that's his machsede, that's his lacking. So every person has different needs. Loi zu isha. What's lacking? This is a wife. This is a mitzvah. Loi. It says in masculine, loi. 
the mitzvah to find to do a shidduch, to be a, to be a shatchan. We should all be shatchan and to help people find their to find the right shidduch and they should get married. As the Torah says, I say, I say, I'll make to him a helpmate opposite him. It's the same word, loy. Verse number nine. Be, beware, least to be your heart an unfaithful thought. Say, the seventh year of the year of release has approached. It's approaching. This year, like it approached already. And therefore, and therefore, you're going to be begrudged, your needy brother. Well, I sit there, you say, wait a second, I'm not going to loan. I'm going to stop loaning a year or two before Shemitah. I'll stop giving loans. Especially the year before Shemitah, I'm going to stop giving loans. So therefore, the Hashem, the poor, your poor brother will call a cry to God. Nobody's loaning any money. And you'll be a sin to you. Now she says, one might think this is a requirement, namely that the poor is obligated to cry it against you. If the Torah says, on this day you shall give him his payment so that he's not crying against you. They'll not, they're not obligated. Oh, you bachachet. Oh, you will have a sin in any case, even if he does not cry against you. You still have a sin for not loaning, for not borrowing money. If so, why does it say you shall, and he will cry out against you? It means that God says, I hasten to punish the response to one who cries out more than the one who does not cry out. Therefore, you bring your brother, you bring somebody that has no money to cry out against you. That's when it's not a good situation. But you should not wait for that situation where the person cries out. Should do not say titan light. Should surely give him. But the yadel above your heart shall not be grieved. The titan lay when you give him. You be glad and dove because of this thing, this charity. You verech Hashem alekecha. God blesses you. The chol masecha and all your work. The chol mishlach beidecha and all the your endeavors. So not say titan light. Again, we have a double expression, even a hundred times. Between you and him, privately. Don't make a big announcement that you're helping somebody. Do it in the private. This word, even if you said they gave him a word that you would give, you will receive a reward saying along with the reward of the deed. Give him a dover. Not only give him money, help him, but Give them a good word. Give it to him and tell him, uplift him with a word. So you don't give him the charity. You throw him. You say, here, you know, I'm helping you. You're, you're a bum. But tell him, listen, the Abish will help you. Don't worry. You're going to get out of this side. You'll get one day out of this pain. So the word is a very important thing to uplift your friend who needs to ask for charity. Verse 11, Ki la yachtal mecha evi or they'll never cease to be needy within the land. Therefore, I'm asking you today. I'm, I'm asking, I'm commanding you to, to you. Open your hand to your brother, to your poor man, to your needy, in your land. So since there's always going to be poor people, I came, they came because of this. I offer you advice for your own good. Be charitable for your own good. To your hand, to your brother who is poor. Which brother? To your poor one. The, uh, the word over here is spelled with one yud. A singular form means one poor person, but an yecha with two yuds, denoting a plural form, meaning two poor people. And since it's written with one yud, meaning one poor person, thus modifying a chicha, your brother, which is in a singular. So both of them said, la chicha, la echa, 
to your brother, to the singular, to the singular poor person. Verse number 12. Your brother, your Hebrew man or Hebrew woman is sold to you as a slave. Avad Khan will serve you Shay Shaman for six years. Bashana Shri is in the seventh year. Shlachana Khafshi may mark you to send him free. This is not the seventh year of Jubal, the seventh year of Shemitah. This is the seventh year of his service. Let's see. Yimarcholach adeh achelim by others, and not one who sells himself because of poverty. So as you see, can hear one whose court sold, the theft he has committed. But it has not already been stated, if you buy a Hebrew slave, this is the book of Mishpatim, already in Exodus. And there too, scriptures refer to one who sold by court. Nevertheless, as you repeat here, there's two points which are new here. First thing is written the Hebrew woman, that she too is like a maidservant, goes free at the end of six years. This does not mean a woman who the court has sold, or a woman is not sold by the court on account of theft. Only a man is sold on account of theft. Since it says that a thief shall be sold for his theft, not for her theft. Thus, we are referring here to a minor whose father sold as a, the, the, the minor, the girl, who was 12 to 12 and a half, whose father sold her. He wanted to marry her off. So he sold her as a slave. Hopefully, the master will, will marry her off to his children. And it teaches us here that after six years terminated there, before she shows signs of purity, she goes free. Second, New point is, you shall surely provide in this next, next, uh, next verse the concept of seven spray, that a person needs to be sent out with uh, a naka, it's called. So see, when you send a person out in the seventh year, you're not allowed to send them empty handed. You shall certainly, surely. Anaka, you shall surely provide him for your flock. From your flock, from your threshing floor, and from your vats of wine, which God has given to you, you shall give to you. Says, this is the root, the Hanik Tanik, the root Anak, donates an ornament for one high on the upper portion of the body with the view of the eye. Thus, this verse means that you should give him something through which it will recognize that you have benefited him. Show him that he was valuable to you. Others explain the word hane, expression of loading on his neck, meaning that you should load him with gifts. Next, Rashi, you shall show him, provide him with, from your flock, from your threshing floor, from your vat. One might think, I must give him only things that are listed in this verse. Therefore, scripture states from the, what the Lord your God has blessed you, meaning from everything which the Creator has blessed you. And why are these mentioned? Just as these particular things are within the realm of blessings, so too you should provide him only what falls in the realm of blessing. Therefore, this excludes mules, which are sterile, and are thus not considered in the realm of blessings. Back to the condition. Our rabbis arrive by means of a gazette shava. How much one must give a servant of each kind? So there's, a, there's, a, there's an amount, hadik tadik, how much a person gives towards Hanukkah. Concept of when you, in Allah, have a hadik tadik, a person that works for you, and you let him go, you have to give him a month of salary, you have to give him a month per year. So it's a, if it works for you 10 years, that's usually the amount we give him. We give him 10 months of salary if you fire the person. That's called Hanik Tanik, you have to give him a knocker. And also, this is only if a person is fired, the other person leaves on his own. Remember when, they do, when you remember when you were slaves in the land of Egypt? And the Abish took you out. So remember this, this commandment. I mean, the Tata says you worked for 210 years in slavery, but I loaded you up with booty when you left. 
he didn't left empty-handed. And then did so a second time from the spoils of Egypt to the spoils of the Red Sea. So too you should load him up and then do it a second time. Give him and give the person, the slave that you work for you, made someone that worked for you, give her Hanaka, give her, um, let her leave, not empty-handed, let her leave, or let him leave with money. Verse number 16, but if the guy says, I don't want to leave you, I like you, I'm enjoying this job, as I enjoy your family, because it's good. I want to be a slave. Verse number 17, and you should take a no, and you'll put it through his ear, and in the door, and then he becomes a servant to you forever. So do you do it to a mate. She says two things. First of all, one might think bloody lummies forever is translated literally. Therefore, we know it says in, the, in that in the sanctum of the fifth in Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, proclaims throughout the land and the inhabitants of the year of Jubilee for you, and you shall return every man to his property, and you shall return every man to his family. So therefore, we know that it cannot mean over here, the word over here, Lo'ilam, does not mean forever. It means in the year of, Ju- of Jubilee. Consequently, we learn that the word Lo'ilam can only mean until the year of Jubilee. And that's considered la'ila. Whenever jubilee comes, this person that says, I want to be a slave, will be freed. Afla moscha tasa came. And you should do this for your maidservant. Hashi says, we know a maidservant is not the law that she becomes a slave till jubilee. To provide, therefore, I shall be here that Naka is going, the, the, to the, the, the maidservant is going on concern, not letting her out empty-handed, but to give her what's called Hanukkah, to provide for. One might think that, that the pus includes concerning piercing of the ear. Therefore, it says openly in the title that it's only a male. But the maid servants will clearly say, I, if the maid, man servant, I mean, I love my master, then his master shall be a, a maid servant is only done and stay can 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 uh, can do this that he put a, a, a he put a mark in his ear and he becomes a slave for until you jubilee, but not a uh, a female servant. Verse number eighteen: Do not be troubled when you send them free. Because for twice as much as, as a hired servant, he has served you for six years. And your Lord, your God, will bless you in all that you do. Ashi says, from here we learn, from here Rabbis learn, a Hebrew slave serves you both by day and by night. And that is a double the amount of a labor of a man who hired for only day one. And while his service during the night, his master gives him a Kanana maid servant as a wife. That's one of the things that the master is allowed to, that the Taylor says, that an owner of a slave can give his maid, his man servant, the Jewish man servant, is a maid, a non Jewish maid. And they can have children, which will be belong to the master, as we learned in, this, in the portion of Mishpat. That concludes Chomish. We are um, going to the, uh, the uh, holding the Tanya of the day. That's the end of the ninth letter of the Alter Rebbe. And the Alter Rebbe is talking about the greatness of charity, and especially the charity in the land of Israel, and especially to the righteous Jews of the land of Israel. Therefore, my beloved ones, my brothers, Direct your hearts to these words, and the modern b'tzad emoyed, which I which express very briefly. Bim reitz Hashem with the with the help of God. Pe'a pe'a dababam baruch. I'll speak to you face to face. At last.
How these times and approaching the footsteps of Mashiach are close upon us. The principal service of God, the most important thing today is charity. Which it costs to uh, be saying of the Chayla Bracha as a rabbi is of great, a rabbi is of blessed memory. The Gemara says, Ein Yisrael Negalun Elabitz Dok. The Jewish people were redeemed, but through charity. Only through charity. Loy Am Rabbi Sayyidina Talmud of Rabbi. Our sages didn't say the statement, Talmud Tayyid is shocked, Kanega Mills Hasadin. The study of Tayyida is equivalent. In the performance of acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. So this is the Gemara and Mishnah Peya that says that the study of Torah is equivalent to all of that. How much Torah can I call it? We say that every day, every morning. Meaning that all mitzvahs previously enumerated in the Mishnah, which also includes in the Mishnah with the Gemilas Chasadim, the performance of acts of loving kindness. So, what am I telling you that over here, the most important mitzvah of the Dukkah? We know that Talmud Torah is more important. The Mishnah is talking about the times of the Mishnah. And the times of the Mishnah, the Tanoyim and the Amaroyim, they were the ones who brought the Torah to the world. And therefore, their most important service was learning of Torah. And therefore, in those days, were great, great sages. Tanoyim and Hanoyim, the one who wrote the Mishnah, Amaroyim, the one who wrote the Gemara. Hashem came by Ikhlas the Mishnah. This is not the Avaida, even though we have to learn Torah, it's self understood. We have to do every mitzvah. But the Avaida of the footsteps, the time of the footsteps of Mashiach, Shanafla Sukkah's David, that the Sukkah of David, as we say, in uh, by Sukkot, we say, Rachman, Yachal, Sukkot, Dovin, and Ephelis. That the Sukkot of David has fallen to the level of feet and heels, which add to the Chinas Asiya, till the level of the world of action. Meaning, Sphira is called Malchus of Atzilus. The Shechina invests itself in the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzin, Asiya, as known as Sukkot, David. For David as the king of Israel was a Merkava to Malchus of Attila. It was a chariot of the Malchus of the world of Attila. So when we say David HaMelech, David HaMelech, which is Malchus, which is symbolic of kingship. Rachamon, he has a sukkah David. David and the sukkah of David has fallen. Sukkah is just like the sukkah surrounds everybody. So too, David Melech, his greatness uplifted everybody. His greatness, which is the greatness of the kingship. That's why we, we, we keep on praying, David Melech, that King David, who is symbolic of Malchus of the world of Atzillus, surrounded the Jewish people, protected the Jewish people, brought about, brought about the building, of, the, the, the cleansing of Israel. The protection of the Jews in Israel and the whole world. Right now, right now, Sukkah is dotted in a palace. Right now, that Sukkah that has fallen. And we are, don't have that, we don't have that, 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 that we need to rebuild it. We hope and pray that we're going to come back to, to, uh, to the to Mashiach, who's Ben David, is going to bring back the concept of Malchus, the revelation of this concept in the world, but right now we have not this, uh, this revelation of the protection from the aspect of limited teda from the learning of teda. There's no way truly to cleave to him unto him. The Shechina, we don't have it through Dov and Amela, we don't have it through the concept of teda. The transforming darkness of the world to the light in Bechina Sasiya. Okay. Today, learning Torah is not going to change the world, but action. Respond to action. And not through intelligence and speech alone, as 
study Peter, we need to have a mice we can. We need to have concept of action. She mice and docker, which is which is the act of charity. Why charity nuka Why can we do other mitzvahs? Why dafkich? Why am I saying only charity? If we're talking about action, maybe it's every mitzvah. So why dafka? Why specifically charity? You do a lot of but it's known to those that are scholarly. Shabbos shalom. Reference to divinity. The concept of a mitzvah in general is the concept of an action, is a reference to divine diffusion downwards. What's the concept of mitzvah? Is bringing godliness to the ultimate lowest levels of life. the flow of vitality to the lowest depths. The one who has nothing on his own. That's the mitzvah. I am a poor man, and by me doing a mitzvah, I get it. I get it's darker. I get it's darker from God. And God brings down a light into the world, something that I would not have on my own. So amongst the current divine influence that descend into various worlds, there are those that are called thought and speech. The flow of vitality, the very lowest level. So the world of Asiya, the world of action, where godness is not at all manifest, it's called action. The act of giving Tzedakah. So that's why Tzedakah is most important, because that's helping somebody that's in need, which is a concept of all mitzvahs. Bringing down a light to a place that is need. Place of darkness, a place of negativity, a place of lacking, a place of an army. Poor, the every destitute, I'm in need. I need God. I'm, I'm living in darkness. I don't have great intellect. I don't have great, great uh, knowledge. I'm an army. In Ani El Abedas, I'm an I'm poor in my mind. And through my Maisa Mitzvah state, which gives me light. So that's why the act of Daka does truly corresponds to the spiritual level of Asiya. In so much as it too provides benefit to one who has nothing of his own. I'm giving to somebody that's in need. That person or that organization, whoever you give Daka to, they need it. And without you giving to them, they wouldn't have it. So that is, that is the same concept of the Avish that comes down to the world of Asiya that's in me, in the world of Bria, in the world of Yitzhida, in the world of the, in the spiritual world, they're not in need. They have spirituality. But the world of action, the world of darkness, in the world, of, in the world where there's no spiritual revelation, this is the world that's in need. This is a poor world. But the Avish that says, by you helping somebody that's in need, I will come down to the need. I will come down to the needy world. Whoever sacrifices his impulse in this respect, meaning respect to charity, that he go, gives it till it hurts. And he opens his hand and his heart. That's how we're going to transform the world. That's how we're going to bring light to darkness, thereby causing the evil side of the universe to be subjugated. That's the way, by subjugating my own kindness, my own Yetzirah, because I'm taking the money that I can use for my own pleasures, and I'm giving it to somebody else. That's me. Now I have diffused a light into the world. <laughs> And he converts darkness into light, to an action. And he converts darkness to the light of God, blessed be he, who at the time when the footsteps of the Shia are close upon us, dwells over us in a state of action. The Yiska Lida is Moreover, will merit to behold. I died. Yeshuv Hashem Tien. 
God who returns to Zion, etc. That time, Shia comes, physical eye, though yet retaining its physicality, will behold godliness as beheld by the supernal eye. So today, we don't have that capability. Right now, we're in the, we're in the mode of action. We're not in the mode of seeing, of comprehending per se. We're more in the mode of action because we are changing the darkness of the world. We're changing a world that is in lack, that has no intellect, that is in darkness, that has no sight, and we're still nevertheless bringing light to the world, transforming the world, uplifting the world, helping the world, helping one each other, helping especially a person who is an ani, a poor man who is in need. Thus, within the physical world of Asiya, there will be revealed the level of, cert uh, uh, of certainty in the spiritual perception, which is called vision, which Shem we will be able to see what's Dhaka has accomplished in the world, a level that so far surpasses the furthest attainments of intellect, we will be able to see get like godliness, which is much greater than all the intellect in godliness, we will actually see godliness. So our action today, that we do today through my talk by uplifting somebody, God will ultimately uplift us. And we will not only have great intellect, we'll be able to see the Abishta, we'll be able to see God, which is higher than intellect. That's why it says, Dr. Then brings down the statement of the Gemara, that any saw in the Golan element is darker, that the Jewish people were redeemed through the acts of Shari. That completes Tanya. Today is the 29th day of the month. If you say chapter 140 to 144 in Tilim, in your Psalms, you would do the chitas of the day. I hope tomorrow you will learn chitas by yourself, the chumash, the tanya of the day, and Mitch and I will get back together on Sunday, 8 o'clock, we can start the new Pasha and continue the tanya. I want to wish you all a good Shabbos and a good Swedish. Tomorrow is a Swedish Elul. First uh, day of the Swedish, two days of tomorrow and uh, tomorrow and, 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 and Sunday. I want to wish you all a good Swedish, a happy Swedish, a healthy Swedish. And let's hope that the Swedish and Achla, we go to the, the month of mercy, that the Abishu shall have mercy on all of us and give us all a Ksiva, a Ksiva, a shall all be signed and written for a happy and healthy and wonderful year. And it should be in Midshed that before the ending of this uh, month, our month of Elul, we should all go and merit to be the Hatzainak Day, the coming of Mashiach and revelation of godliness in the world. Have a wonderful and beautiful Shabbos.